<laughs> Welcome to the Mystic Access Podcast, where the magic is in learning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Mystic Access Podcast. This is the podcast before Halloween. I'm Chris. I'm Kim. And I'm Lisa. We have some treats today, (laughs) but not necessarily a lot of treats, although it really depends on your definition of treat. If you are looking for handy-dandy new products and programs for us to tell you about and opportunities to perhaps even visit with us, well, in that case, then we have some definite treats for you today. The treats we don't have this time our product demos and that is because well even people as curious as the three of us are can only buy so many new stuff find so many new apps and at present we at least two of us are off exhibiting i will be at the pennsylvania council of the blind in pittsburgh pennsylvania actually that will have already happened as of the time of this podcast recording but i will have done a comparison of the orbit reader 20 and the braille me the braille me the braille me as you know we've talked about this before it has come back to us with many improvements and positive changes and one thing i kept saying over and over in my initial review was please watch this technology because it definitely looks like it is evolving and it most certainly has And I will also be exhibiting and hopefully meeting or renewing acquaintance with some of you. And Chris, I believe, is also gallivanting about that same time. Yes, I will be, again, this doesn't really matter too much, but the podcast is already... Of course it matters. Well, it doesn't because... It matters. People want to know where we're at. Well, I know, but they can't go meet us (laughs) because it's in the can Well, they can wish. Okay. They can wish. They can be envious or or they can say, oh, thank goodness I missed them. That's true. Exactly. Okay, so I will be in <laughs> Buffalo at the New York State NFB convention. This one will be after the podcast, so I will also be at the Ohio NFB convention on November 3rd. So coming up real soon now. So if you're in Ohio, come out and meet Chris and learn more about what we do and pick up some material and listen to some demos and learn more about what and we do. And we hope to have at least one demo from convention and maybe some audio to share with you so definitely keep on listening and we will share as we have that available absolutely that's going to be quite fun and we're really hoping that will be ready and available for y'all very soon but it's fun to know where we are and what we're doing and what we're up to it's always fun to kind of know where we are what we're up to what's going on you notice that we didn't hear my name in the list of exhibitors and that's because i am coming off a whirlwind bunch of stuff (laughs) that has been going down and my big baby project is the biggest thing that i've ever done for mystic access and those of you who know me know that it's go big or go home for me and this particular project was huge i'm very pleased to let y'all know that the wordpress course is released and out to the world and very excited it is 13 and a half hours of audio that is one big baby That is one big baby, and that's only one component of the course. It's crazy. So much, and there's a lot in previous podcasts about this, so I'm not going to belabor the point too much, but please know that if you want to learn how to build a WordPress site with a screen reader, and you want to build it on a really powerful, accessible platform, this may be something that you want to check out. It is insanely priced. There's no way... It could be lower than it possibly is, so please don't ask me because it's not going to happen. And it is really a wealth of material. So not only do you get 13 and a half hours of audio, you also get a discussion list. You get a resource portal, which is still more or less in development, but there are goodies already there for you to check out. You also get access to a WordPress demo. So you can actually log in and see what the back end of a WordPress website looks like. So there's a lot of stuff in this course, and there will be live calls available as well. And for those wondering about how the live calls come to you, you'll learn about that on our discussion list once you're registered for the course, and also via the news page in our course portal. 
these are all different elements and we have to register you for those manually so please do hold on to your seats when you join us because it may take a little while for us to get all of that done for you hopefully within 24 hours we can get your registrations approved and all that if you want to learn more we're going to include for your listening pleasure a little montage and this is the sample that you can hear on mysticaccess.com for the wordpress course this is the home study course so this is not something you have to find time to attend live you can do it at your own pace and take your time and really i encourage you to because this is a lot of information definitely check this out and we will include a link to the course information in the show notes but here is a sample of what you will hear in the wordpress your website your way the power, flexibility, and affordability of WordPress home study course. Hello, I'm Kim Loftus, Director of Product Development with Mystic Access. I would love to welcome you to this course, your website, your way, the power, flexibility, and affordability of WordPress. Thanks for joining me. Introduction. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me for this course. I really appreciate it, and I'm really excited to take you on a journey into the fascinating world of building a website utilizing WordPress. My name is Kim Loftus. I'm Director of Product Development with Mystic Access. I'm also a WordPress user myself since 2011. In this introduction, I want to give you an idea of what is covered in this course and the layout of the course, as well as some ways to utilize the material. First, however, I want to introduce you to a little bit of my own story and tell you why this course matters so much to me and how I got started. I am totally blind, and I have relied on a screen reader ever since I began using computers. And I really was never the type of person who said, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to build websites and I'm going to be an entrepreneur. And it's kind of funny the curveballs that life throws at you because that is ultimately what I ended up doing exactly. My first website was built in 2006. And at that time, I had a static HTML site that someone else did all the coding for. And there was really not nearly as much that I could do on that website as what I wanted to do, which was very disappointing to me because I'm a writer. I am very concerned with expressing myself well and giving the details that I want to give both in my writing and in general. And this was something that was very important to me. I really felt like I wanted to be able to share all the information I could in a concise but detailed manner online. And on my own websites, it was very frustrating to not have the type of accessibility that I wanted at the time. I had some blogs back then as well. I was blogging. I think I was blogging on Blogspot at the time. And there I could do everything myself, you know, ironically enough. So on my blog, I was able to, I felt, express myself with fewer constrictions than I could on my main website where I was selling my coaching services, my meditations, etc. So it was very frustrating for me. In 2011, I began exploring WordPress and self-hosted WordPress sites. Before that, I had had a WordPress.com website, and so I knew something about the power of the platform. There are, however, major differences between WordPress.com and a self-hosted WordPress website, and we will get into that in this course. However, I was very interested in seeing if I could, in fact, access my websites more independently after five years of frustration and annoyance and having to wait for my webmistress to do a lot of things for me that I would have much preferred to do myself. It would cost me less, so of course it would be more economical financially, but it would also just be more freeing for me as a website owner and as an entrepreneur who really wanted to express herself fully and in a timely manner as well. So I began looking at WordPress and discovered to my great joy that it was an accessible platform. It was something that I could use myself with very little sighted assistance. In a situation like what we've just done, though, we don't even care about the DNS server or the name servers because we've done it all at one company, so it's not as big a deal. It does it for us. The hosting company does. We could also take a quick peek and check out email. Link email. So I just did a screen find for the word email. Clickable link forwarders. Clickable link autoresponders. Okay, so let's Clickable. go back up to Let's go back to email, yep. 
Clickable link pro link email. cPanel email accounts. Banner landmark clickable. So now we're in cPanel email accounts. And cPanel Click- is what you're going to see with a lot of hosts. A lot of hosts use cPanel. So if you do switch between hosts and they both have cPanel, it's going to be pretty familiar to you. Sure. Clickable manage the email accounts associated with your domain. Use the setup mail client interface to add an email account to your mobile device or desktop email client. For more information, read the link documentation. Heading level 3 add email account. Email. Edit required invalid entry enter and account name. We can show you this real quick. I'm going to do S. I typed in my name because that's what I wanted to be Chris at mysticaccess.shop. See panel email accounts document password edit protected required invalid entry password enter a password password again edit protected and if you have this in browse mode it might be giving you more information as well just something to note right let's go into browse mode real quick mailbox quota radio button checked edit required 500 MB. If you're a photographer, for instance, and you're getting tons and tons and tons of stuff from other people, or you're sharing things, or you're having lots of images sent to you, or audio, or things like that, you want something bigger than 500 megs. Right. Blank. Radio button not checked. Unlimited. There you go. So you could actually set it to unlimited. So let's say, for example, you set it to 5 megs, and somebody sent you an audio song that they recorded, and it was 7 megs, it wouldn't go through. Because it would be too much. Yeah, you never want to set it that low. Exactly. At least leave it at the default and maybe make it bigger. Yeah, it really depends on what you want to do, how much mail you want to archive. You know, you got a quota or you got unlimited. So it depends on what you purchased and what they allow. Blank. Blank. Button create account. And that's really all there is to it. When yeah, I... I wonder how you know if it accepted your email address. Is it just your email? You just put in your name. I guess that's the only account on the website, or the only domain the on the website. Domain on the website. Mm-hmm. Let's go back up and look. Yeah, let's see if it's it says anything. Clickable email edit required email Chris at mysticaccess.shop. See, yep. there it is. If there you're is. in browse mode, you'll see that underneath it's got at mysticaccess.shop. Load files and and. You know, as soon as they were able to download their own files onto your machine, or upload, I'm sorry, upload their their files to your machine, you were toast. And that spread like wildfire. And it's since been fixed, but I mean, there were an awful lot of sites that got hammered with that one. And the security is a lot better these days. You got a lot more people looking for things, the good guys as well as the bad guys. But there are what are called zero-day exploits, which are things that the good guys don't know about yet. And those happen too frequently, but not, you know, not constantly. But anyway, for those, you need some sort of a security plugin that can kind of detect those and deal with them before they become a problem. I've got several pages here to play with, and I want a few of them in this menu. So I'm going to say... Checkbox not checked our mission. Checked. I'm going to check that one. Checkbox not checked home. Checked. Check. Checkbox not checked frequently asked questions. Checked. Checkbox not checked. Contact us. Checked. Checkbox not checked. About. Checked. And about. Those are the only ones I want in the menu. Checkbox not checked. Sample page. Your site will probably come with a sample page. You probably don't want that in your menu. (laughs) So you can delete it or do whatever you want with it, but you probably don't want it in your main menu. So I'm not going to check that one. Out of list button select all. You can select all. You can use that button to select all your pages. Button add to menu. There's a button that says Add to Menu. This is actually what I want to do, so I'm going to press Enter here because I've selected some pages. I want them in my menu. Button Select all. Button Add to Menu. Heading Level 3 Posts Press. Okay, let me see if that worked because it didn't seem to refresh. Custom li- Category Category Menu Structure Heading Level 3. All right. List with Oops. Out of List Menu Name. List with four items heading level three categories. Press return or enter. Uh, edit has auto complete main navigation menu. So I moved down past categories. Remember how we saw those headings before? There were like categories and posts and pages, and various categories of things that we could add to our menu. Link more information about coming soon page and maintenance mode by CProd5020. And it has closed it for me. So now I'm back to where I was. It's closed that overlay. So it's really cool, the amount of stuff that you can find out utilizing the more information link for these plugins.
So you can see more of these plugins and you can find out about their customer rating. You can view more information and get more detailed info. If you want to read customer reviews, for instance, you would do that through that more information link, stuff like that. I wanted to show you, in addition to how you would find our particular maintenance plugin, there's a particular one I want to show you. I want to go back up here to the search box. Search plugins, search plugins. Edit has autocomplete. The search results will be updated as you type construction. The final thing I want to show you before we actually go in and talk more about building the blog, because there is more you're going to need to do, is comments. I'm going to go to the top of the page. Out of table main menu navigation landmark link skip the main content. I'm going to type the word comment. I'm going to do a find command. List with 18 items sub menu link comments. We have a sub menu here called comments. And I just want to show you what this would be like. List with two items link all comments. You can see all comments. So all comments, all the comments that have ever been posted on your blog. You can see them right here. Link find spam comments. And you can find spam comments. Let's go into link all comments. All comments. And this isn't a good blog to play with. Let's comments. show you how it works. If you want to view your comments from here, press H. Main landmark comments heading level 1. And scroll down. Heading level 2, filter comments list. You can filter your comments list. If you get a bunch of stuff as spam, and you can use plugins like Akismet and others like that to assist you in cutting down on your spam, there's lots of things. If you type in like comment spam or something like that into your plugin repository, you can find lots of things to help you with that. Clean Talk will also be a great one to assist in things like that. That's really excellent, and I love that it is basic, and it moves you step by step. And we've had yes. a lot of people ask, yes, it is accessible to the blind. We certainly would not be producing it if it weren't. Yeah, that would be a little hard for me to start yes. producing if I couldn't. Yes, <laughs> but Kim and Chris are our WordPress people. They know it inside out and backwards, and I am learning it, and I've started working my way through the course and it really has taken me from feeling like oh my goodness this is something so big I'm not sure I could do this to I can learn to do this you know I just need to take my time and follow the steps and in some cases listen to something that is maybe a little confusing to me more than once and so I'm very new to this I've been learning bits of this off and on for about four years I've been gloriously dragging my feet this really brings it all together. I feel like if I can do this, just about anybody can. And I really think that the important thing is, is as you listen, to just get in there and be willing to explore. Put your fingers into that pie and play in there and don't be afraid of it. That's one of the reasons that we really wanted to give you a sample site to go in and play with. If you aren't comfortable going in and trying to break your own, I mean, um, work on your own. <laughs> and I say that jokingly because it will happen, guys. It's just part of the process. You're going to do stuff that you went, what? How did I manage to wreck this? It does happen. The advantage to playing at a sample site is if you break it, we can fix it. No problem. We'll just reset it. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> reset it. The magic that's reset what we're button. Do. After all, there are about 60 of you in the course at this point in the game. So, um, yeah, we're probably going to be doing some serious resets every now and again in this course because you're going to be playing in the sample site. But really, don't be afraid of it. If you have additional questions, Please let me know, but I encourage you, if you are already in the course, please read your emails carefully that I am sending out to y'all because there's a lot of information in them, and hopefully that information will clarify for you what it is that you need to do or what it is that you need to wait for or whatever it is because there's a lot of moving parts to this course, and we want to get you in and get everything set up as easy-peasy as possible for you. So hang in there with me, okay? <laughs> we have some other very exciting news to share for those of you who have purchased our orbit reader tutorial or those of you Yay! who think you might want to we now have transcription this makes it a really helpful resource i believe for not only those who read braille but those who only read braille as in people who are deaf blind Certainly do tell your friends. We're very happy to have this available for you. And she has really done a 
fantastic job of this description. I'm not going to talk about her at length because we do hope to drag her kicking and screaming, or maybe willingly, here's we hoping. Uh, maybe willingly. She's a pretty open, outgoing yeah. gal, so I think she might be willing We'd to We'd love this. to have her <laughs> and interview her about her work because she really does a fine job. So if you want to get the transcripts, all you need to do is re-download your tutorial and it will be in the zip file. Speaking of downloading, we are thrilled to tell you that free downloads is now up and functional again. We had a little bit of a problem. Those of you who called in, I can't get anything to download. Well, there was nothing we. there. Yes, there was nothing there. There was nothing there. It was disappeared into gone. the twilight zone for Halloween. Yes. However, yes. through the magic of blood, sweat, and tears, thank you, Chris, it is now back. And also, the two most recent classes that we had, you've been asking, where are the downloads? Where are the downloads? And we will have them up. We're bringing them to you. They should be available by the time you hear this podcast. We do apologize for the delay. But sometimes we need to juggle priorities, and we promised you that WordPress would be out by a certain time, and it is. <laughs> it is, and so it is. this it came is. out, yes. but a little later than we hoped. But it is up nonetheless, and so we hope that you enjoy the resource. Absolutely, and sometimes it just does take a little longer. Hopefully, that won't be so much the case without huge products monopolizing our time, but. Thanks for your patience. Everything's up now. We are all up to date in terms of class-related stuff that needs editing. Speaking of classes, we have our free class for October just around the corner. Chris, I bet you want to share that with us, don't you? I do? You? Oh, yeah. You do. Sure I guess you I do. Because <laughs> you're teaching it. Because you're teaching it. We will be having a class on backing up files. So some people ask how to back up files and, you know, what is a backup? You know, is copying one file off to an SD card or a hard drive good enough? I mean, moving one file off to an SD card or a hard drive, is that, a, is that considered a backup? And that's absolutely not considered a backup. Because if you do that and that media that you copied it to goes south, then you've lost the only copy. So what you need to do is make at least two to three backups in two to three different locations. And that will safeguard your data. Speaking of backups, I don't know if some people know this, but Microsoft had to halt their latest Windows update because the installation would delete files out of people's documents. Ooh, yeah. And somebody lost 23 years, 200 and some odd <gasps> gigs worth of files. And no, thank God, it was not one of us. No, it was not. It was it was it was somebody on the. It made a big deal in the news and stuff. And somebody, yeah, said, um, "I installed this. I went and seeked it out, and I installed it, and I lost all of my data." And apparently, oh. he didn't have a backup. You never really what realize how important your stuff is until. All of a sudden it's gone or you think it's gone. I had backed up to a single external hard drive. I still had everything on my computer, but I thought I had lost the hard drive and I was about apoplectic. I'm like, my stuff, my stuff. And here it was an easy fix, but you don't really realize how important it is until it's gone. So mm -hmm. backing up is really vital. And if you have sensitive or secure information or things that you are generating like if you're writing if you're doing writing books or you know even just your own journal whatever it really behooves you to learn the different ways that you can back up and choose one that will work best for you and there's all kinds there's not just like a backup to say a an external hard drive or something there's hardware and software solutions and cloud and paid solutions and all, free yes, cloud and exactly all sorts of stuff so Chris is a very good one to tell us about all this stuff because, frankly, he's the one who knows. There's the most manual, and there's <laughs> automatic, and there's this yeah, and that see? and the other thing, and uh, you know we'll cover. We'll be enjoying and learning right along with y'all. Yes, indeed. Uh, guaranteed, there's stuff that we don't know. Speaking of stuff we don't know, Chris also makes an appearance in our last iOS module for October. <laughs> now, this does. 
will again have happened prior to the release of the podcast, but you still have time to sign up for the first set of six modules, which is complete, as well as for this set, which is ongoing. We have three in October and three more in November, and then we'll take a little break and then we'll be back with you with more topics and more modules in January. And Chris's module in October, you can get after the fact, as Lisa said. So even if you've missed one of our ongoing modules that's happening currently in October and November, you can get those if you wish to. We can go ahead and get you set up for that if you let us know. Chris is going to talk all about GPS solutions for your iDevices. Yes. So guarantee it's going to be an interesting module. And then, as Lisa said, we've got three more coming up in November. And all of those are Lisa classes once again. So we're really looking forward to seeing how this year's group of modules end up and work themselves out. And for those wondering, yes, as Lisa alluded to, we're going to have lots more iOS modules coming up in the new year. There are reams of them still to be uh, developed and talked about. The nice about. thing about the GPS presentation, if I do say so myself, is that it is a demonstration of some of the apps as well as literally going out and walking through the apps that we talk about in the first half of the course. So I did it that way. So we show the first three. There's three, three apps that we are working on. And what we do is we split those up and then we take those three out for a walk. So you get to hear what the GPS says when you're following a route or things like that. So it's pretty neat, actually. And for those who are curious and are wondering if we're going to have the second six as a set, just like we did with the first six, the answer is absolutely. They will be available for purchase by Black Friday. So definitely stay tuned if you want to get them as a set of six all together in a pre-done daisy package. Right. However, just know that we are not discounting any of these modules, any of these live trainings we really have priced them to be available to anyone who needs them and so we will not be discounting them more so if you are waiting for black friday for things like the ios modules and wordpress i would not because we no, that will not be changing so. i have really enjoyed teaching the ios modules but when we came to this one on gps hands down Chris was a shoe in to do it because he spent years working <laughs> shoe Jeep. That was pretty good. Did it on accident, it. but hey. Um, <laughs> anyway, he comes up with the best show titles, just completely off the top. Yeah, of my head. Uh, I love yeah. It. <laughs> Some of them make me groan, but anyway, <laughs> Chris has had years working in the field of GPS, and so I am very anxious to hear this one. I know that I will learn things as well. So. We hope you will too. My first experience with accessible GPS, we were, I never even really saw it, but I was kind of intrigued by the whole, this thing is telling you where you are because it really helps with less stress when you're traveling. Yes. It can be stressful in some situations because you can get lost even though you have this GPS, because it, it does happen, but it does help when you're walking down the street, even if you're in a familiar area, just so that you don't have to count streets and stuff like that, because you're, you're being told the upcoming intersections and stuff. My first experience was kind of funny because I was at CSUN in 2002, and I was at a dinner meeting with Mike May, who was with Sendero Group, and basically they invented the accessible GPS at the time. I purchased the BrailleNote GPS, and Mike says to me, he goes, so what did you think of the demonstration, the live walkthroughs around the CSUN outdoors? And I said, what? He goes, well, didn't you see them? I says, no. I said, I bought this thing sight unseen because I was intrigued. I thought it would help. It's just amazing to see how far we've gone from outdoor navigation. And then now, as I mentioned in the class, just as a passing through note about upcoming indoor navigation and how I've had experience playing in that field for a few days and just knowing where the doors were when you could create a 
route inside and you could follow, you know, you could find your hotel room or you could find a conference room or things like that. It was really neat to see that work. I am one of those people who unfortunately does not have stellar spatial skills. Now, I'm not completely hopeless. I can find my way out of a paper bag on a good day. It's always something I've had to work really hard on. I can't hold pictures of things in my head. If I'm really tired, forget it completely. It's something that kind of is a disappointment to me about myself. It's something that I have worked and continue to work very hard on. But I find that GPS is very empowering because when I use it, I actually find that I do have a better spatial sense of my surroundings. I say that it's part blindness and part inherited from my poor little grandma who could just about get lost walking around a block. And she had 2020, so I guess I got a double whammy there. GPS is one of those things that is just everywhere, but I'm thankful for it. And at this convention that I'm going to in Pittsburgh, the Carnegie Mellon has invented an app that's working on indoor GPS and will have access to that. And there's also kind of a simulator sort of app thingy. I haven't really gotten to play with it much. But basically, you can tell it, I want to go from the elevator to the conference room. And it will guide you along. It will simulate that route. So you can do it even before you are there, which I intended to do and kind of ran out of time. I just think it's fascinating. And if you want to learn how to use that stuff on your iDevice, then you might want to consider purchasing this module. Well, not the indoor stuff. I just want right, to make right. that, make yeah, that clear. In general. I think if you learn about, let's say that you really couldn't care less about outdoor GPS, you know, maybe you care a little bit. Or maybe, you know, you mostly ride in a car, and you, but you want to know what you're passing. If you learn these foundational skills, you might find that you want to branch out. And you'll also find, I think, based on the indoor apps that I've used, that when it comes to using these things for indoors, you'll already have that foundation that you need. But no, this module does not cover the use of indoor apps per se. And on some level, whether it be GPS or WordPress or anything else, sometimes we're just intimidated by stuff. And I think sometimes the more we're willing to dive in and play, even if it's just a little bit to kind of familiarize ourselves, that will encourage us to either play more or to at least say, I'm comfortable enough to know that if, should I, whatever, need, have to, et cetera, that I could in a pinch or I could learn more. I had the willingness to accept that I may need to learn yeah. more. So sometimes it's just a head game. I hesitate to tell this story because it makes it sound like I have a swelled head and I really don't. I don't think. But I was out to dinner with a friend of mine last night and we were talking about technology a little bit and she's not terribly techie. And she said to me, how'd you get so smart with this stuff? And I said, thank you. That's a really kind thing to say. And she said, no, no, that's not a comment. That's a question. She said, I want to know how you got so smart with this stuff. And I thought for a minute and I said, I guess there are two steps. And I don't always feel that I'm, quote, smart with this stuff. But the fact that I've learned anything at all, I mean, I know I've said this before, but I never thought I'd use a computer, insert expletive before computer, because they were always for the math and science nerds and when I was in high school, and I wasn't one of those. And I kind of ended up entering that world kicking and screaming because I needed it for work. Basically, I said, you know, I think it's two things. One is that I'm patient and I don't really have rest until I find answers. But the other is that I wasn't afraid to explore and to make mistakes. When I got my very first computer from the Bureau of Blindness and Visual Services. The man came to set it up and he would be repeating myself as well here. Um, don't worry, I have an, an appointment with a memory specialist Monday or is it Tuesday or <laughs> insert bad joke. Anyway, <laughs> I said to the man who brought the computer, I said, I have a question. I said, it's vital to me that you take me seriously and that you not dismiss me because I said, I'm really afraid of this thing. And I said, 
how can I mess it up completely? How can I make it stop working? I said, you know, there are obvious things like if you take a hammer to it, it's not going to work. But I said, what can I type on the keyboard that will mess it up? Because I've heard, you know, people typing things and the computer stopped working. And he said, well, there are a couple. You know, you could do, this was back in the DOS days. He said, you could do format, you know, you could do DEL space star dot star. And I think there were one or two other ones that he gave me. And I said, really? I said, I would never, I could never, I would never do that just accidentally. And that was so freeing to me because it gave me the freedom to explore. And really, I think whether we're working with a computer or an iDevice or whatever, that's really what we need is to know that we have that freedom to explore. And I think really, I'm thinking you guys would agree with me that our devices have become more damage proof. I mean, like in Windows, you don't want to go deleting files and programs if you don't know what they are. In general, if you're just typing or you're surfing the web or whatever, you really can't mess things up too badly. And that exploring kind of mindset will really help. Yeah, like you said, I don't think Absolutely. I don't think you can format C on Windows. I don't think you can, not that way. Right, I don't think it'll let you. Or if it does, it will ask you a thousand times, you know, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure? Are you sure? I even get really, that when really, I go really to format sure? an SD card. It's like, yes, I'm sure, yep. please just do it. And the thing about your situation, too, with DOS, there was only one place that you could type that and it would work, and that would be at the DOS prompt. Yes. I mean, yes. if you're if you're hanging out in WordPerfect, just dated exactly. myself. Yes, you and me both. It wouldn't matter. You could type that into WordPerfect, and it's like, okay, whatever. It's part of your document. I was so thankful that he took me seriously. He wasn't right. like, oh, don't worry, little lady. Y'all, y'all aren't going to mess nothing up, you know? He, <laughs> he gave my question the respect that I felt it deserved and it really changed the trajectory of my learning about computers. Had he answered in a different way, my experience might have been totally different. Right. Anyway, now that we have digressed and kind of been all over the place <laughs> and hopefully in ways that are helpful to you, we'd like to thank you all for listening and hope you will join us for the next one. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> The preceding podcast is a presentation of Mystic Access, where the magic is in learning. To contact us, please visit www.mysticaccess.com. Call us, 716-543-3323, and press 2 to reach our Mystic Access podcast comment line. Email us at show at mysticaccesspodcast.com, and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mysticaccess. Would you like to spread the word about our podcasts? Please tell your friends and colleagues to visit us at www.mysticaccesspodcast.com. If you enjoy what you hear on our podcasts, feel free to leave us an iTunes rating and review. We certainly appreciate those. Also, you may feel free to use our podcasts in your own RSS feed. Just be sure that all of our contact information is left intact. Thanks for spreading the word, and thanks for listening. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode.